Hey guys, in this video I'm going to introduce you with the reunions that are confirmed to take place in the Season 8 premiere. These reunions will take place where it all started at Winterfell, some are long awaited, some unexpected and some tense, so let's just jump into it. In the end of Season 7, some main characters are already in Winterfell, while most of them are heading towards it and are yet to arrive. John and Danny, with their entire crews, which includes quite a bit of the main characters, are on the boat heading for White Harbor with the Unsullied, where they land and meet at the check on the King's Road, and then ride together to Winterfell, arriving within the fortnight, or at least that was the plan in the end of Season 7. In my prediction video regarding Season 8, I predicted that all this would likely take place off screen, and we'd only see them arriving in Winterfell in the Season 8 premiere, which has been confirmed a few weeks ago with the very first teaser of the final season. With most of the characters being at the same place, we expect many reunions and first meetings to take place. Jon reuniting with his friends and family, Danny meeting the Starks, etc. And that's exactly what we are going to get, a series of new reunions taking place in the very first episode, as the first official teaser confirmed it. In case you have not been caught up with the news, a few weeks ago Entertainment Weekly provided the first exclusive look at what's to come in the next and final season of Game of Thrones. Teaser includes a detailed description of the opening scene, the largest battle scene ever filmed for not only Game of Thrones but for the television in general, and the mysterious scene from the very finale, all of which I already discussed in my previous videos. The focus here is on the opening scene that sees the arrival of Jon and Danny with their crews at Winterfell, which is said to be similar to King Robert's arrival in the series premiere. This episode will be an episode full of reunions, so if you've been eager for some of your favorite characters to finally reunite, good news is for getting it in the very first episode of the final season. With this breaking news of the opening scene being in Winterfell where Jon and Danny are arriving with their crews, describing it as an episode full of reunions, some major reunions have basically been confirmed now. In part 1 I brought you reunions between Jon and his family, with the tense one being with Sansa who said not to be thrilled that Jon bannoned into his fancy new Targaryen girlfriend, at least not at first. Beside reuniting with his family, in part 1 Jon also reunites with his friends, out of which the most important is with Sam who has the life-changing information waiting for Jon. Jon also reunites with his direwolf, whose current location has been confirmed to be Winterfell, while his appearance was confirmed by directors and visual effects supervisor. However, it's not only Jon who arrives at Winterfell, and it's not only his reunions they discussed in part 1, there's also Sanner the Hound Clegane, who is part of Jon's crew. I brought you his reunion with Sansa and Arya, perhaps the only two people he cares about. There's also Ginji and Arya reunion, which could potentially be the first step forward into Ginji's father's Robert Baratheon's promise to Arya's father Ned Stark in season 1 finally being fulfilled. If you have not seen the first part of Confirmed Reunions, I highly suggest you to do so. Anyways, now that you know that these, as well as the following reunions, have been confirmed by the first teaser of the final season, the first reunion I'd like to discuss in this video is between Arya Stark and the Spider Varys. Among all other reunions, this is the only one that's not long awaited or that much discussed, but it's a reunion that could mean an end for Varys. Varys and Arya never shared a scene, but the two certainly saw each other while living at the same place during the first season. Why could this reunion be the end for Varys? Why would Arya kill the spider? For the same reason she killed Littlefinger, for betraying her father. Back in the very first season, while cat chasing training exercise, Arya found her way into the dungeons under the Red Keep, where she sees the dragon skulls, but more importantly, overhears Varys who plots with Illyria about the future war between the Starks and the Lannisters. Varys meets his ally who secretly harbored the last remaining Targaryen heirs and who arranged the wedding of Danny to Khal Drogo, all of which was Varys' plan. Varys informs Illyrio how the new hand of the king Ned Stark now has the same book that his predecessor read, and has met Robert's bastard son Gindry, the same evidence which led Jon and Rain to discover the truth about Queen Cersei's children. Illyrio suggests the possibility that the same fate may befall Lord Stark as did his predecessor, but Varys states that Ned is not the same man as Arryn was. Varys assures Illyrio that the conflict between the Lannisters and the Starks will soon escalate into a civil war. Illyrio protests that the war will not serve their purpose right now, since Khal Drogo is not yet ready to send his army of the Trekkie to invade Westeros for the Targaryens. Varys protests that there is no way of delaying the incoming conflict, so the Trekkie must be urged to move faster. Arya basically overheard Varys plotting of having the Starks and the Lannisters fight each other so the Targaryens could come into the unstable Westeros, making their conquest far easier. Arya killed Littlefinger because of all his crimes against her family, because he betrayed her father and set the war between the Starks and the Lancers. But Arya now reunites with a man who had the same plans, Varys. But one would say, but Varys tried to save Ned. How did he betray him? Yes, Varys is the one who talks Ned into confessing his false crimes in order to be allowed to take Black and live his days with his son on the wall, framing it as being for his children's sake, while in fact he did not care for Ned nor his family. Varys simply wanted Ned to confess, take the black and avoid the death, because as we know from an overheard conversation between Varys and Illyria, they were not ready for all-out war yet and Ned's death would and did spark one. 
Varys planned to set a war between the lions and the wolves, but he did not want an outright war for the time being, because Danny is pregnant and he knew that Khal Drogo would never start a campaign before the birth of his child. So Varys basically tried to prevent Ned from dying because he did not want the war just yet. But eventually he planned to set a war between the Starks and the Lannisters when Danny and the Dothraki were ready to invade Westeros. Varys could say that he tried to save Ned from dying, but Arya overheard Varys plotting with Illyria. She knows Varys planned to set a war between the wolves and the lions. Crime Slowfinger did against her family. Crime Slowfinger paid with his life. Another reunion I'd like to talk about is not as intense or intense at all really. Perhaps one of the reunions that most fans will love to finally see is the one between Sansa and Tyrion. Once a married couple, the two will surely be happy to see each other alive and well after a long time. Tyrion was the only Lannister that cared for Sansa and actually tried to make her time at King's Landing a bit better by protecting her from King Joffrey numerous times and by being kind to her all the time. It did not take Sansa long to realize that Tyrion is not like his family. She quickly grew to trust him and like him as a person. They have both been through some rough times since then and one or two scenes between those two would be great to see. If I'd have to guess, I'd say that Tyrion will ask Sansa how she escaped King's Landing and how they managed to see through Littlefinger's game. While we are all excited for the big reunions, there's plenty of, let's call it, minor reunions that are also going to be very interesting, such as Jorah Mormont reuniting with Lyanna Mormont and Sam. This episode is full of reunions, but it's also an episode full of first meetings, out of which some are said to be intense, such as the Stark sisters meeting Danny, about which I talked in the first part. However, this will not be Danny's only intense first meeting, as beside the Stark sister, she's also going to meet Jon Snow's best friend Samuel Tarly, whose father and brother she burned alive during this past season. Anyways, it's not only Danny, John, and their crews that are heading from King's Landing to Winterfell. There's one more man that's heading north to help the living win the Great War. It's Jamie Lannister, whose arrival at Winterfell might not have been confirmed by the Season 8 teaser, but it's safe to say that he'll arrive there sooner or later. John, Danny, and all other main characters who are traveling with them will arrive at Winterfell in the Season 8 premiere, but Jamie, who's unlike them, been traveling on his horse instead of a boat, will likely arrive a bit later, probably in Episode 2. Jamie will have a huge reunion with quite a bit of characters. There's Tyrion and Brienne who will likely be happy and proud that Jaime has honored his pledge, while Danny might be a little suspicious about his intentions when she finds out Cersei does not plan to aid them in the Great War to come. Of course, Jaime's most important reunion is the one with Bran Stark. As we all know, back in the first season, Jaime was caught having an intimate relationship with Cersei by Bran. To keep Bran from reporting what he had just witnessed, which would have resulted with Jaime, Cersei and all their children being executed, Jaime had to push Bran out of the tower window, costing Bran the ability to walk and rendering him a cripple. The question we all have regarding this reunion is, how will Bran react? At first glance, we would assume that Bran would react angrily, since that's the man who almost killed him the last time they saw each other, but that most likely will not be the case. Jon Snow invited the Lannisters to come and support the living in the wars to come. Jaime agreed and he honored his pledge, meaning that no harm would Jon do to him nor would he allow anyone else to do so. Meaning that Arya most likely will not kill Jaime as soon as she finds out Jaime attempted to kill her sibling. However, it's not the stark reaction we are looking for out of this reunion, it's Bran's. In the fourth episode of the seventh season, Bran stated that he's not Bran Stark anymore, but rather the Three-Eyed Raven. What does that mean? It means that he will not sentence Jaime to death, nor will he allow anyone else to do him any harm. Rather than sentencing Jaime to death, Bran will, in my opinion, reveal to everyone the real truth behind Jaime's so-called betrayal over Danny's father, the Mad King. Jamie should not be mocked and called the Kingslayer, but rather the hero and the savior of the city, as Jamie killed the Mad King just because he could not let him burn hundreds of thousands of innocent people. Yes, Jamie was one of the established members of the King's Guard under the Mad King, and his duty was to protect the King from harm at all times. But even if Jamie decided that all the innocent people of King's Landing are not worth of killing his king, he would have still broken an oath. You are no knight. You have forsaken every vow you ever took. So many vows. They make you swear and swear. Defend the king, obey the king, obey your father, protect the innocent, defend the weak. And what if your father despises the king? What if the king massacres the innocent? It's too much. No matter what you do, you're forsaking one vow or another. The Kingsguard is an elite group of seven knights who are religiously influenced by the code of chivalry and honor. This code states that knights must defend the weak and the innocent, so even if Jaime, instead of killing him, did let the Mad King burn the capital to the ground along with all innocent people in it, Jaime would have still broken an oath. So seemingly an intense reunion which something could end with Jaime's death will likely be just the opposite. Jaime and his great deeds will finally get the recognition he and his act against the Mad King deserve. Not the traitor, not the Kingslayer, but the hero and the savior of King's Landing and its people. 
There you have it guys, confirmed reunions of the final season of Game of Thrones. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!